Hey, welcome everybody to our review episode of Pasión de las Pasiones by Brandon Lee Gambetta and Magpie Games. We are Control Group, and we played a couple of episodes with this system. I love it. Um, I knew it would be great for the group. I have a couple of players here. They are... Uh, Nicholas Hodge, I play Lorenzo Fuentes. Uh, my name is Hadley Singer, I play Dom Flores. And I'm Dennis Veray, I played Ziomaro da Placina. I don't remember if I said my name. I'm Marcus, and I was production. Um, now, I wanted to say, first of all, I was just like, I found this game. I was super excited about it. I shared it with the group. I was like, our play style is hilarious, and we would be so good playing this game. And everybody, immediately, they were all like, yeah, that's awesome. And I thought we were just going to hang out and play it. Dennis was the one who was like, no, we should we should record this for sure, just in case. Always I, be recorded. You guys were totally right. Like, I... I didn't think we were going to be. That's why there's no. We didn't record an intro for it at the time, even. But um, yeah, it's. I'm so glad we did because it was so funny. And and Nick was immediately too. Like we should do this again. So we we played again, and it went differently. But it was awesome. Still so fun. So yeah, you have to check out the system. So uh, talk about the campaign first, right? Yeah. How do we do this? Dennis, you can introduce what's, which segments we're doing, because I don't know that. I just know how to, how to start. Yeah, so first, we're going we're gonna to talk about how we felt we did with the system, and then we're going to talk about the system itself later. Okay, so piggybacking off of what Mark had said, um, I think that this did work well for us specifically. At least, uh, I think it did, um, because we all have like sort of a background in like improv, and specifically like long-form improv. So it, being as free as we were with the system, I think, was good. Um, given the, um, the just sort of scenario of like a soap opera, you know, it, it's very, it's allowed, allowed us to like be very imaginative with it. Um, however, I think that towards the end of our session, we got a little too imaginative. Um, and that's just because of our own brains, I think. But, <laughs> but um, uh, yeah. I mean, well, I think I noticed- maybe part of it was that we, we really took in the, cause when Marcus said, uh, when Marcus was like, we're going to cut to the season finale. I'm like, oh God, <laughs> like we, shit has to go down in between, in, in, in between two years. What was it, Marcus? Two years was yeah. technically, yeah. So because I think the show had already been on for a couple of months. Too. I think the strength of this system is when you know exactly what tools you're playing with and the tone you're using, of course. All that, it works so perfectly. We were really able to get in character for the first time, for the first session. And I made a playset that kind of had all the little tools that, um, Brandon had put into his playset already in the, um, ash can for this game, which is like the original kind of version you could get for free. So I had a little bit in there about like, oh, there's a missing fortune you could find. And there's like a possible mystery. And there's a tenuous situation where you might have to compete with each other from each restaurant there's there's like a couple of different plot threads there that it your play set should let you pull off of and then if you especially just let your characters or your players run with it for our group specifically we were all very very ready to like start our own scenes run our own scenes i was like the gm but i was giving them a lot of power in terms of choosing what was going to happen with the story because I just love to do that and yeah. I didn't stop them once they did. I was like, this is perfect. Please do that. And it felt so. necessary as, as the characters, you know, because you're like, well, they just said that. Like, I got to, you know, establish this like crazy flashback or, you know, this crazy backstory or like, uh, you know, it's, it seemed like it was like a lot of like heightening that we did off of each other. Um, I just felt like there was like so much. Yeah, I think that was the biggest knock against us is that we were so fucking ready to heighten that <laughs> yeah. kind of all, all the general like plotting and scheming that goes into a telenovela or a soap, soap opera was like thrown out of the window and we should have just I feel like we should have backed up a little and left all the heightening to Marcus because Marcus was like ready to throw out like bam there's a fire bam you're in the basement bam you have a f- flamethrower and like just from the second that Nick threw out the first gunshot gunshot we 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 <laughs> shot ourselves into fucking too hype territory I think also <laughs> it could have been improved if we had um had more people playing it which I think this 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 mm-hmm. thing does lend itself towards this system um, because that way we could have been able to really have to pace ourselves and like establish the other characters 
um, including mm-hmm. the NPCs, but like you know having just more PCs playing, um, so we have time to like uh, weave the interpersonal relationships because it like has that built into it too. You know that we have like um, backstory with each other. Um, so I, I think maybe we there should we needed like something that was gonna like slow us down. You know. Yeah. 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 This system really. I I was thinking about it because like. Like, we we only really had, like, two scenes that we would jump back and forth from. It was, like, the scene that when we first started, it was the scene with Nick. And then, like, me and Dennis were in the same hotel uh, restaurant. And so, like, it was we would jump between two scenes. But if you had all six characters, I can see, like, how, like, how awesome this yeah. format would be. As opposed to, like like typical D and D sessions where it's like you can have three characters and in fact sometimes I prefer having only three people do D and D because then like everybody gets yeah. a turn. The specificity of, of class with this too was interesting. Like that like you're saying, yeah. like we could have seen like all the multiple levels of like the entire system. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it was a bit harder I was playing the Ladanya playbook, which is a very schemy long term playbook it's all like i'm gonna get it in the end i'm gonna seize the restaurant in the end and having things thrown so fast and heightened so fast i just had to play so slow in comparison and felt well felt I too think, rushed yeah i think also you had to react with like it was my plan all along which i think was very funny yeah, I really, exactly. I really like that. <laughs> um but yeah i think <laughs> It's just like, if you listen to this, I assume you watched the second episode, you can see how we just kind of drove ourselves right into a finale, just like, boom! <laughs> we just ran there. Yeah. I yeah. Sprinted. To be fair, though, I also, I was trying to play, like, fast and loose. I was like, we only have a couple <laughs> players. We have um, one, probably just a one shot that we're going to do. We're just hanging out, having fun. We'll throw as many random surprises as we can. It was probably too much. And... I even, like, ran out of them. I was like, you're attacked by thugs. There's a fire. You don't know about your feelings and whether or not you love this person. Okay, that's my whole list. I'm lost now. So if you're a GM, maybe prepare a bunch of twists. I don't know. I liked uh, all of our characters, though. I mean, I liked, yeah, I liked no. Don, Don and his goons. I liked to see Omar <laughs> four to six and her goons. sister. <laughs> Evil twin. Yeah. I mean, I'll take the fall. I mean... I I mean I thought we could have stuck with zombies. I thought zombies was great <laughs> by, the, by the end, but then I'm like, yeah, and robots, right? <laughs> As if zombies wasn't enough, I'm like, let me just pile robots right on top. When you have to start considering the production value of the thing that you're making, you know, it's like it's, got, it's going down. I think uh, we can reveal a secret behind the scenes fact here, which is, uh, um, I think zombies and robots, okay. You know, that's not that crazy. <laughs> but when you add yeah. time travel on top as well, <laughs> maybe that's too far, to, too many degrees. So that's a little uh, taste of the fact that we had another episode we were going to release for this. You don't get a scene. It will not seem like that. No, no, we God. crashed and burned trying to fix the episode before that because we were like, we went too big. We need to rain this. Did the opposite. We so, we respect ourselves too much. <laughs> So don't so don't do what we did. And I think it's important for us to note that that's what happened because I don't know. Maybe we just went too big, or I don't know. And I think also I think that the establishment of like the location was cool. I like the two restaurants. Like we had like yeah. a little in like Romeo and Juliet joke. Um, you know, like that that was a cool setting. I think that um, that this game maybe lends itself more towards um, like very like mundane locations. You know what I mean? Like maybe so less less big, less flashy, or, or something, um, or just you know we we limit the limit the location a little bit like where it's like in the desert you know or like something that like you it's really about the the emotions between the characters as opposed to like external things yeah well i mean at a certain even in the first episode at a certain point we had like i don't even know there's like cartels and like secret agents in the in the hotel and everything so like no matter what we did it just kept ballooning bigger but i'd be interested to try this again it's my bottom line that would be fun to just just have it set in just a unique location, not necessarily a huge, big, high concept thing. Um, and I think play this in like a sitcom format over time a little bit. Give it a mm-hmm. few episodes and you can kind of try and really explore every aspect of that location too. Because I wanted so bad to do a giant cook-off, you know, where you guys have to <laughs> compete with your skills as right. chefs. We never got a chance to because everything was going so crazy. But, you know, maybe we could do that. We could do... One where everybody's on the roof and win one big fight between all the different, I don't know, 
groups of underground <laughs> armies. I don't know, but I think you could really pursue each concept kind of one at a time instead of doing all of them at the same time, which is what we did. I guess you. I, I guess you could truly say there there were too many chefs in the kitchen on this one. Hey, <laughs> hey. hey. <laughs> Um, but we cannot yeah. we cannot stress enough how much we enjoy the system, how much the system yeah. works, the freedom that this system I'm allows of players to have. <laughs> yeah, this it's is genius. this is great for people who have. Uh, this is great for players who have the mindset going in, being like, "I know exactly how telenovelas work. I'm gonna do, it, and I'm gonna do it." Uh, because I'll admit, uh, I've like I think the most. The, the most amount of telenovelas I've seen was about what what it, it must have been like oh god what's it April oh shit so it, it must have been three months ago in a doctor's office while I was waiting <laughs> <laughs> so, no it wasn't a doctor's office it was I was going to get my fingerprints for uh, substitute teaching and um, they were they had a telenovela playing and I watched that thing God it was crazy <laughs> but like um, I went off of the there any zombies. No, there there weren't any zombies, but there was a murder. There was like somebody, and I knew who did it. Like, damn, like I know who did it, but <laughs> I didn't get to I didn't get to get to the next episode because the whole thing it was crazy. It was nuts. <laughs> and I promise we'll lend our strengths to Hadley eventually <laughs> in Control Group. We'll we'll play something that Hadley understands and knows. Yes, <laughs> yeah, one of these <laughs> days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But I think this is something that you could like this system. Like if you were, if you like picked it up, you could, and you were like bored with like your roommates, you could definitely just play this together. Totally, you know. Well, don't get me wrong; I still had fun. I was saying it's for a very <laughs> group of yeah. people too. For us, we were inclined to lean toward you know all this crazy action sequences and stuff. But if you wanted to all be just about this social conflicts and romance, and uh, I mean that's just as much drama. You could you could pull just as much out of it. it it's it's really variable for different groups and i think I, and i heard in one of the interviews with brandon lee gambetta that he was brandon leon you remember? yeah i had it written down you I better say it right brandon leon gambetta, Leon, yeah that he was like making the system and then he heard from i think even the maker of apocalypse i don't know one of the other ones that they were like there's no way to make a power by the apocalypse system without stats so i have to figure out stats and he was like Nope. And you took that as a challenge. And that's why he made this system without stats. You just have to ask your question every time. That is genius. Mm-hmm. I've never seen that in a game before. There's so many aspects like that that really lend themselves to making the plot kind of in the fiction latch onto what you're rolling and your mechanics, which is what Power by the Apocalypse is about. So I like that it's it's rooted in character motivations um, and questions, like you said. Um, and I like that it, it forces you towards the melodramatic. You know, like the your like the conditions you have, the meltdowns you have, like stuff like that. Like, I I think that it it ensures that the game is going to be fun and that people are are um, going to be like really character driven, yeah. which I think sometimes you you're not when you're playing like a, a traditional D and D or something. You know? Any other thoughts? Yeah. Any last thoughts on the system, yeah. Passion de las Passiones? It's um, it's like the the rifle that Ralphie gets in a Christmas story. You know. It's amazing. The rifle is spectacular, but we definitely <laughs> shot our eye out with it. <laughs> Kid. I was wondering, I was like, where is he going with this? And I'm like, oh, of course. <laughs> How many more of these comparisons do we need? <laughs> do we need any more metaphors? Too many cooks yeah. in the Christmas story. <laughs> yeah, too many cooks in the Christmas did. story. Dude, that is the title of this review. <laughs> too many cooks in a Christmas story. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's right. give our official reviews. Um... I think this system is a full Hadley, but our our diluge in the second and un, you'll never see it third episode was like not even a third of a Hadley. <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> I will give this system uh, ten dramatic gasps, um, <laughs> and I give our playing of it. Uh, uh, eight sparklers. <laughs> eight sparklers. <laughs> damn, because they're not gonna they're not gonna last long. But it, damn, it it it's 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 tight, you know. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, nope, they burn out quick. <laughs> they burn out. Quick. <laughs> uh, what about you, Marcus? 
Uh, I want to say I give it about a 36 out of 40. It was really, it was really amazing. And those are numbers. You're not allowed to use numbers. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I love the system and I had something I was going to say and I forget. This, okay. this system, this system is like the seven layer burrito at Taco Bell. Like it is so fucking delicious. Like the rest of the menu sucks, but the seven layer, seven layer burrito is just godlike. You know what I mean? I just then, fuck with those normal tacos at Taco Bell, I'm going to be honest with you. Well, that's what I was about to say, is that the way we played it, I'd say it's like half a broken taco, and then like, th- like three uh, quesa- like cheese quesadillas, no chicken in it. But you're drunk and you're eating the shit out of it. I think it's... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. It tastes, it tastes so good, but it's not substantial, you know? <laughs> Kelsey Grammer. Just one Kelsey Grammer. Three <laughs> just one then, Kelsey Grammer. And then just a little... Oh, oh baby, I hear the blues are calling. Good night, everybody. All right, that's the end of the review. Thank you guys so much for listening. Check out our other campaigns. Clamor if you guys really want to hear that unheard episode. It just left Kickstarter. You can still pre-order it. Check it out. Go to Magpie Games and get their other games as well. They're awesome. Get masks. Uh, Brandon worked on that as well. Woo! Uh, fo- follow us on social media at Control Group, CTRL, just like the key on the keyboard. We also have a YouTube. We're also on Twitch. Ah! Hey, and make sure you call your mom. Just let her know that. Toss salads and scrambled eggs all over my face. <laughs> <laughs>